Let me turn the agent speed up a little. We've made the power loader safer, now let's make it smarter. This episode is sponsored by Aliens, Fireteam Elite. Ambitious projects like the power loader all start somewhere. Back in January of 2019, we released the first episode of the Aliens Power Loader series. We had limited resources back then and very limited space. We had no right to even be considering a project of this scale, but we didn't let that stop us. We broke up the project into multiple steps, episode by episode, from the arms to the grippers, to the body to the legs, from the old garage to the new shop. It's crazy to think that nearly three years later, through motivation, passion, blood, sweat, and tears, I now stand in front of this ridiculous machine straight out of science fiction. Join us as we inch closer and closer to the finish line. And don't forget to grab your very own limited edition Power Loader t-shirt, available now on hacksmith.store. Working on or around this thing is pretty scary. There's no insurance, no regulations, and no room for error. It's all on me. There's currently nothing stopping the system from injuring the pilot. So, our first line of defense is emergency stops. A kill switch for the pilot, which stops all motion on the entire system. But what if there is no pilot? As you saw in the last episode, we can operate this thing with a PS4 controller. But what if the remote disconnects? What if we have a runaway power loader situation? For this, we partnered with Fort. Fort makes wireless safety systems, and they've provided us with a safety remote control. Basically, it's similar to the PS4 controller, but it has a lot of extra safety features, such as drop detection, communication monitoring, and a built-in e-stop. Fort also sent over their wireless emergency stop, which allows a spotter to stop the system if they see anything going wrong. Finally, all of this controls three safety relays, which guarantee that if an e-stop was to be pressed, power will be cut to the entire system, stopping it immediately. Let's get everything installed. If you'd like to see our updated schematic diagram, make sure to check out the maker.io link in the description below. For the best signal, we're gonna mount this on the very top. Come on. People often say that humans only have five senses. False. One sense we often overlook is called proprioception. Proprioception our ability to feel where our limbs are, even if we can't directly see or hear them. For example, this. I can do this, even with my blindfold on, because my body knows where my limbs are. For the power loader, not so much. Let's change that. Machines only know what they're told, so we have to tell it where the position of this arm is, for example. To do this, we'll be using a rope potentiometer. This sensor provides a potential difference, or a voltage, based on the length of its rope. By adding one of these onto every individual joint, the power loader will now have proprioception. In technical terms, this is called a closed loop feedback system. And there we go, that's one rope potentiometer fully installed. 
Now when the power loader moves its wrist, it's gonna pull on this rope, and it'll know exactly where the wrist is at all times. Now I just need to do it 12 more times. Power Loader Technician Safety Training. Scenario one, wireless e-stop. The operator of the power loader has fallen asleep at the wheel. Silly operator. Luckily, we have a spotter on watch at all times during operation. He safely stops the power loader with the Fort Wireless e-stop. Scenario two, new safe controller drop detection. In this scenario, Bogdan is doing a great job at operating the power loader. No runaway power loader this time. Oh wait, what's this? In classic Hacksmith fashion, it's chaos in the shop today. All thanks to Fort, everyone is safe, including the power loader. Scenario 3. Loss of signal. Bogdan forgot to charge the controller like a simpleton. What is the power loader going to do this time? Nothing. All thanks to the Fort safety controller with loss of signal detection. And now a word from our sponsor. We can get so caught up in engineering and manufacturing this power loader that sometimes it's easy to forget that we're actually building a real life version of a mega prop from one of the most iconic science fiction franchises of all time. From films to comics to video games, Alien has been a constant form of entertainment since 1979. And the newest exciting addition to the franchise is Aliens, Fireteam Elite, a cooperative third-person survival shooter that puts you and a team of Marines right in the middle of an intense battle to keep the Xenomorph threat at bay. It's a completely original storyline set 23 years after the events of the original Alien film trilogy. Four unique, replayable, story-driven campaigns feature stunning visuals, iconic environments, over 20 enemy types, and more. Create and customize your own Colonial Marine, choosing from an extensive variety of classes, weapons, gear, and perks in this heart-pounding survival shooter experience. Aliens Fireteam Elite is available now for $39.99. So get your copy now, and I'll see you in-game. We've made the power loader safer, now let's make it smarter. I'm going to talk to you about inverse kinematics. So, what is inverse kinematics? Well, it's a bunch of math. And is it interesting? Well, if you ask me, yes. If you ask anyone else, no. Now, I'm going to try to keep this interesting. Let's start with forward kinematics. Forward kinematics is how we figure out where the gripper is in real-world positions. And inverse kinematics is how we figure out the joint angles to get it there. I'm going to use this lamp as an example of why we need inverse kinematics. In order to know where the lamp head is, we first need to know the angles of joint A, joint B, and the lengths of both of the joints as well. This lamp arm is a gross oversimplification of the power loader arm, but it will work for this example. If we move it away from me along the x-axis, you notice that the angles of joint A and B both change. Inverse kinematics is what lets us figure out those angles. The math could be done by hand for every move we want the power loader to make, but that would be slow and stupid. So we're gonna have the computer do it for us. To make use of this math, we need an operating system. Enter ROS. That's what's gonna kill me. We can integrate our joysticks, the inverse kinematics model, the safety system, and it all runs on the Revolution Pi Kun bus system we introduced in the last episode. Now, to take it from here, Anmol. Hey, I'm Anmol, and I'm a co-op here at Hacksmith Industries. Today, I get to talk to you about ROS, AKA the Robot Operating System. ROS is essentially a framework of software packages such as the robot hardware interface, the robot controllers, and the communication infrastructure that allows everything to work together. Ben has given me a ton of data. I'm going to implement ROS to process all of this data and send commands to the power loader. This will let the power loader move safely and accurately. We have all the necessary components to run the software packages in this box that Ben built. You know how we said we're gonna make the power loader smarter? We gave it a brain. Here are the connectors for the power loader. On the other side, we have our secondary computers, one to manage all the auxiliary I.O. and one to manage all the ROS applications. Over here, we have the power distribution system. And finally, we have the relays. They allow us to control all the auxiliaries and the primary valves. 
In order for us to leverage the precise control Inverse Kinematics affords us, we're going to need a more refined hydraulic system for the power loader. Right now, the power loader joints are either on or off, moving at full speed or completely stopped. This is called digital control, and it's fine for most applications. But for us, we want smooth, precise control of every individual joint all at the same time. And to do this, we need proportional valves. It's a valve that allows us to proportionally control exactly how much fluid flows through it, depending on how fast we want things to move. Let me just show you an example. Here's a perfect example of a digital valve. There's either no fluid flowing or all of it is flowing. On the other hand, here we have an example of a proportional valve. We can have a lot of flow, a little bit of flow, all of the flow, none of the flow. It's completely controllable. We've partnered with Bosch Rexroth, who sent us over some of their amazing proportional valves. These valves have a low hysteresis, a low latency, and a high flow. And they're direct drop-in replacements for our current valves. So we gotta pull those ones out, put these ones in, update our software, and we should have smooth, precise control over every joint. All right, we have the new Bosch Rexroth proportional valves installed into this hand and the old on-off valves in this one. Let me show you how they compare. Let me show you the old arm. We can move up and down no problem. And we can move left and right. But as soon as we try to move the two together, if we move up and to the left, for example, our arm stops moving up, and that's because all the hydraulic flow is going to the path of least resistance, which in this case is the pan wrist cylinder. Let's compare that to the new valves. If we use the new valves, again, we can move up and down, and we can move left and right. But the difference is, with the new valves, we can now do both of those things at the same time. Watch this. That is so much better. I have really fine control. And again, for comparison, the old arm. As soon as they start moving to the left, it completely stops moving off and actually starts dropping. To show you just how much of an improvement to smoothness the new proportional valves have made, let me turn the engine speed up a little. All right, first up, the new proportional valves. That looks great, but let's see how the old valves perform. Let's go up. Yeah, I think I'm gonna stop using those old ones. <laughs> All right, so in my hopes of trying to demonstrate what I was talking about, uh, I think I overdid it a little bit. That motion was actually so erratic on the old valves that we actually bent the bicep. And that arm is hanging on by a thread now. I guess the next step is to replace all the valves with Bosch Rexroth proportional valves, add some software limits so this doesn't happen again. That's a future Bogdan problem though. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.